Hi, everybody. I'm Vince Molinaro, and I am really excited to have Alandi Hayes, who is the CEO of the ADECO Group, one of the world's largest uh, HR and temporary staffing uh, companies, a global Fortune 500 company. And he and his company are at the really the leading edge of redefining the world of work. And I could not think of a better leader uh, to kick off this video series. So, Alain, welcome. And I really am honored to have you uh, for this conversation. Thank you, Vinci. Happy, uh, happy to be here and happy to contribute to, uh, to your video series. Great. Thanks. Well, let's just get right into it. So 2020, uh, for every leader, every person on the planet has been extraordinary. The term that's used over and over again is unprecedented. And here we are, you know, um, several months in. And what have you learned, uh, kind of what have been the leadership insights you've been gaining so far uh, over this period of time? For sure, it hasn't been an uh, unprecedented time, or it is an unprecedented time because it's not finished. We are really, uh, we are really in it. Um, for me, it's personally, it's my third crisis. So not that I, I was not used to, but for sure, this one has been extremely uh, fast, extremely large, quite brutal. Uh, and uh, as usual, so you you have to put priorities, and and on all sides we have put three priorities when we have started to enter uh, mid-March in, in this crisis. First, we said people first, and it was very important to make sure our people were in good health and, and risk situation. So make sure that uh, there was no compromise, no risk on, on the health situation or for own people, but also of for uh, associates. Uh, don't forget, we have more than 700,000 people working every day for our customers. 100,000 customers, and we had to make sure that they were in a very good, safe and healthy environment. Uh, second is be close to the customers, because yes, in, in this time, some of them had huge decrease of business and, and be there to, to support them, uh, even if only emotionally, but some of them had huge increase. For one of our customers, we have recruited 16,000 people in eight weeks time. Wow because you have seen the, the really the explosion of, of the e-commerce. Uh, and thanks to the good relationship, the good work the team has done, we have allowed this customer to be really successful. Can you imagine 16,000 people recruited in eight weeks time? And Mark third, Mark. yes, and third is um, don't waste the crisis. So make sure that you, you look at opportunity, you look at potentially reinvent some of the things uh, you are you have been doing and especially intensify intensify the communication the contacts with your own people but also with your customers because the big danger when you go digital is that you lose this proximity both with your customers and, and, and both uh, with your teams. And I've put as self-discipline to continue to interact uh, with our largest customers in the world in a regular way. Um, and it has been extremely positive. And the same with our own people. Uh, we spend a lot of time in front of the video conference, right. making sure everybody was, uh, was well, uh, was taking the appropriate uh, measures and felt also supported, which is very yeah. important. Yeah. So, you know, what's great there is a real clarity as the crisis unfolds, right? A focus on your people, a focus on your customers and not letting the crisis, as you say, uh, you know, really go to waste because it gives you an opportunity to do things you haven't done before. Gives you a chance to think differently, to pivot and having that sense of clarity uh, is, is really important. And what you say, I think subtly, which is really astute is, uh, you know, whenever we're bombarded with a you know with a crisis we can get very internally focused and have our heads down trying to get everything done and you kind of put the discipline in place to say we've got to remain focused on the market we've got to remain close to our customers close to our employees um uh, in order to drive the company's success so uh, that, you know it's a great example that i know will be valuable to uh, so many so how have you coped because this is one of the things I, i'm hearing a lot from the leaders i work with is the need to have resilience to have resolve and and I'd be curious as to how have you managed personally during this time because you know I, I, I got to imagine leading um, 
a global Fortune 500 company, uh, you know, in, in the midst of a global pandemic, uh, re, you know, a recession, uh, riots around systemic racism, all these things that have been playing out around the planet. How, how have you, what have you done to kind of take care of yourself um, so you can kind of take care of others? No, I, I think it's, uh, yes, uh, you need to have a kind of uh, strong discipline uh, about yourself, about your hygiene, I would say the, the, the diet hygiene and so on to make sure you are really uh, top fit uh, with your health. We had also ourselves to protect ourselves to make sure we didn't, we didn't get uh, the, the COVID ourselves. To, uh, but I would say the, the greatest support is the one you are receiving from, I would say, your beloved, mm -hmm. your family, your spouse, your partner, uh, and, and the one you are receiving from your team. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this has been great. We have also intensified uh, both as a family, but also as, as, as a company and, and with my leadership team, we have yeah. intensified the relationship. We, we moved to bi-weekly uh, meetings. Uh, we moved to a, a weekly uh, Sunday meetings with the family, a digital one, because to also to support each other and get positive energy uh, yeah. out of this. And, and I think this is probably the most important source of positive energy in such situation. Yeah, and, and you know, sometimes a, a crisis I've found can either pull people together uh, or it can pull them apart. Yeah. And, and you have focused on making sure, uh, whether it's your family, whether it's your own executive committee, whether it's your leaders really coming together becomes critical. Yeah, intensive. Yeah. No. Yeah. Now, now the ADECO Group uh, uh, has just released uh, recently uh, a, r a really extensive study, really looking at how the world of work has changed, and, and it's titled "Resetting uh, Normal." It's available on your website, and uh, in it, it really uh, has some very interesting insights for leaders. Uh, I, I'd like you to share a few of those uh, top of mind. Uh, you know, what are the lessons that you've learned through that research uh, that you've done globally? I think, the, indeed, we, we have uh, interviewed 8,000 people in eight countries, all the major countries, US, UK, uh, France, Germany, Japan. And uh, there are some, some key conclusions. The first one is that the future will be flexible. And there is a kind of new uh, ideal universal, which is the 50-50. 50% 50 at the office, 50% uh, uh, remote can be home, but it can be also somewhere else. And, and, um, and this 50-50 is really independent from the country, the age, the, the, the marital status. Uh, uh, there is a trend towards this 50-50. For us, the question we are raising is, okay, what is the purpose of being at the office and what is the purpose to, be, uh, to work in a remote way? And we are currently working on this, not only to have figures, but also to have purpose behind figures. So more to come later. Uh, second, um, yes, the, the, I would say the, the nine to five era is behind us. Mm -hmm. uh, because on one hand, people are working in a remote way. There are also some challenges to, to, to work remote and, and not able anymore to make the distinctions between work uh, and, and private life. Uh, but this is, uh, this is here to stay. And with this, there will be a new definition of productivity. Because in many jobs, in many companies, in many industries, the, 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 productive, the productivity metrics was defined by the number of hours at your desk or at the office. Right. And, and this will disappear. So it means that companies have to also find other metrics to measure the productivity in, in this new type of work. Third is, uh, is all about uh, leadership. Because on one hand, we have seen that... Um, People have appreciated this remote work, but we have seen also that 28% of the interviewed people were, have been suffering from some kind of uh, psychological uh, pro problem. So isolation, mental, uh, mental issues and so on mm -hmm. because of this isolation, 28%, which is quite significant. And only one of, out of 10 managers have done a proper job <laughs> handling this, this situation. Which means two things, that yes, on one hand, we will have to, to reskill and upskill the people regarding 
hard capabilities, hard skills, and especially uh, around digital tools, uh, digitization, and, and so on. But on the other hand, we will have also to reskill regarding uh, emotional uh, intelligence, for example, empathy. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, because many managers are used to, to manage a team on premise, but they are not used to, to manage, uh, uh, let's say, a, a remote workforce. I give one example with, with ourselves. Normally, we, have, we are 34,000 uh, employees companies, and we are operating from 5,100 locations in the world, in about 60 countries. At the peak of, of the COVID situation, we had 30,000 people working in a remote way. So it was about managing a company in 30,000 locations in the world. How do you make sure that you keep your culture, you keep communicating your value, you keep people focused on the right things to do. You keep your productivity. Uh, this is a, a totally new challenging situation. And many of us and many leaders, many managers are not used to do that. And so that's why uh, all these soft capabilities uh, going forward will be extremely important to develop. And in many ways, you know, uh, as you're talking about it, you know, what becomes, you know, critical is leaders will need to kind of understand how have the expectations of me have changed. And, and you know, one of the questions because of the work I do in leadership accountability has been from my clients is, you know, we need our leaders to be even more accountable now. And I know that, um, you know, a few years back, uh, you and your executive committee uh, did some important work in setting clear expectations for the DECO uh, group leaders around a leadership contract. You know, and I'm and you created that at a very different time than today. So I'd be interested to understand, you know, a little bit about what that work was, but also how are you seeing that work today in light of everything that's happened in the last six months? Yeah. Now, uh, indeed, we have implemented the, this um, sense of accountability and responsibility through the, the leadership contract. And to do that, we, we have invested time in uh, with the team to reflect on this and to craft the, the contract ourselves. So this has been, this work has been really be inclusive uh, and collaborative. Uh, and at the end, we had a, a session where 300 uh, of our top leaders really signed together in the same location, uh, the contract, it was in 2018. So inclusive, collaborative, um, and really uh, invest time in it. I think now going forward, uh, we will for sure have to revisit uh, the, this leadership contract. I think leadership is here to stay, but you will have, it must be also something dynamic because the context, uh, the context, the skills uh, are evolving because of the environment uh, you are in. And especially going forward, I think it's a little bit too early to, to take strong decision uh, because we are still in a kind of recovery. We are not more yeah. in emergency when we are in the recovery, but then we will enter in a transform in transformation periods, mm -hmm. especially after the, the, the vaccine. And, and then we will see what kind of behavior will stay, what kind of context will stay, and how we have to adapt our leadership to that. And that's why we, we are working uh, on the purpose, because we have a strong purpose, uh, make the future work for everyone. But also in the way we, we work, we act, it is important to understand the why we are doing things. And when we say, yeah, we, we want to, to work remote and we want to work on premise, but why? To do what? To achieve what? And when do we, we work on premise and when do we work uh, uh, in a remote way? What is the most productive? Productive mm -hmm. not only in, in financial terms, but also regarding the culture transmission, the value yeah. transmission. Yeah. We need this yeah. moment to... Uh, to nurture our culture and our, va and, and our values. Yeah. And you can partly do it in a digital way, yeah. but you need also this physical contact. To, uh, yeah. yeah. What you're also saying, which is, which is interesting, is this whole idea of, uh, you know, really understanding where the priorities are, which you set out at the beginning, right? Employees, uh, customers. you know, customers, and then really uh, kind of understanding, not wasting the crisis. At the same time, you demonstrate this ability to say, while that's critical, there are other things we need a little more time 
to really understand because we're still in the middle of it uh, or at the beginning of it. We're not sure just yet, right? And so that, that's a really interesting, uh, you know, ability. Now, what, I'd be curious in terms of your perspective on another point because in the conversations I'm having, there's a sense that, you know, the last six months have been demanding uh, the crisis is a challenge for people as we've discussed, but, but what I'm using the term re-entry, coming back uh, is going to be a more complex leadership challenge for a lot of managers, mainly to a lot of the research you cited, right? The need to drive performance, to sustain culture, um, while really bringing more, uh, you know, emotional intelligence and, and that caring comp uh, component to, to leadership and understanding employees' well-being. What's your sense? Do you think in, in the next six months to a year, do you think the leadership challenge will be greater for leaders? Um. For sure, the, the I don't know if it will be more challenging, but it will be different. Yeah, a, a, and you you will you will have to adapt as a leader. Um, again, I, I see this period a, a, as three consecutive periods. There, there is there has been this emergency period. It was mainly between mid March and end of June. It was it was so fast, so brutal, and you had to act in an emergency, mm -hmm. in a very urgent way. But you were not really taking structural decision. You were protecting yourself, but that was it. Then, since I would say uh, beginning of July, we are in the recovery mode. Mm -hmm. uh, even if. According to the, the last figures we see, we could re-enter in a, uh, potentially in an emergency phase. But once we will have the vaccine being found, once the vaccine will be manufactured and, and then injected, disseminated, uh, then we will see a, a kind of new world. A and probably it will be after the summer next year. Uh, and that's where you will see what kind of new context we are in and what is remaining regarding behavior, way of work, and so on, what is coming back to the previous situation, and how you have to adapt uh, to this situation. So that's why I say let's not jump too fast to conclusion, because yeah. the context is not today really uh, the one we will have for the future. Yeah. So uh, let's work now. What we can already say today, for sure, we will be more work in a more flexible way. So this artif this um, emotional intelligence will, will be very important. Empathy will become more important. A a and and for sure, hard hard cores, hard capacity will be uh, very important. That's why perhaps uh, an idea for you. Um, more and more, we will speak about STEM -pathy. So the STEM <laughs> STEM competences in combination with empathy hmm. and, uh, and this will have to be developed uh, for the one having the, the STEM capabilities or the right, one having right. empathy, they will have to, to combine both because work will be amplified by if each of them. Yeah, we will need both, right? We'll, we'll, we'll need both that strong technical capability uh, combined with that strong people capability for sure. Yeah. So I know, I know for the uh, NECO group, um, you know, future leaders is a really important priority. You have the CEO for a month uh, a campaign that you do globally, well over 200,000 young people, um, you know, apply for that uh, coveted opportunity. Uh, uh, one lucky person gets to spend time with you and, and shadow you. Um, and like you, I also have a passion for future leaders. And and they're in a unique position. A lot of young, a lot of young individuals who have just, you know, maybe graduated from uh, university or college, or have just started to enter the workforce, and their world has been upended in a dramatic way. You know, as as my uh, oldest son tells me, is my future is not what I thought it was going to be uh, because of this. So, what advice would you have for them at this moment in time? I'd be really curious. Is you know, what's your advice for future leaders? Um. So I think it's to to stay committed to to your passion and and to your ambition, and, and be resilient and, and be flexible and be curious and be adaptable, because yeah, the journey is not always a straight line. You have to uh, to go from left to right and so on. But but keep your your passion and ambition and have time. Mm -hmm. uh, a career, a professional career, is a uh, is a long time. So probably for us, it was 40, 42 years. The next generation, probably it will be more 50 years. Uh, so it's a long marathon and um, don't be impatient. So uh, I'm sure that after this period, there will be, uh, there will be a great opportunity, but don't lose time. Mm 
yeah. learn, learn, learn by getting experience, whatever the experience, every experience is interesting yeah. uh, and so that you can enrich yourself, your, your CV, your, your skills and capabilities. Uh, and, uh, and we have seen that during the, the COVID lockdown, uh, we opened all our lectures uh, at General Assembly. Uh, free of charge uh, every Friday. Mm -hmm. We had al almost 300,000 subscriptions. Wow. For and this is great because people have leveraged their time uh, to, to learn about data science, about uh, BI, about uh, digital marketing capabilities. And this is a great, great opportunity. So that's also something you, you have to invest. So stick to your ambition but uh, enrich uh, your, your CV and your capabilities. Yeah, so in many ways, you know, it's similar to what you, you have put, you know, the, the vision you've crafted, you know, crafted for your company at this time, you know, around, you know, people, customers, and don't waste the, the, the crisis with the opportunity. I think the same is what you're saying here for young people is, yeah, you can, you know, there's a lot to take in, it could get you down, but there's also opportunity here. And if you think long term, um, that, that's really what's necessary at this moment in time and, and learn those skills that are going to be vital in the workplace. And there are many ways that, that you can do that. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Alain. This has been uh, really enlightening. Uh, I really do appreciate your generosity and sharing your wisdom uh, uh, with uh, everybody that I work with in my network and beyond. And um, I'll leave it to you if you've got any final uh, words of wisdom you want to share, and then we'll bring this uh, conversation to a close. And if not, we'll just say goodbye, and I wish you continued uh, success for you and everyone at the ADECO Group. I want to wish you uh, in chair, uh safe uh, he safe and healthy future uh, take care take good care of yourself and 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 your beloved and uh, talk to you soon then great thank you so much wish yeah. you all the best yeah bye bye bye, bye.